Hey, good afternoon. Um, I'm going to lean forward here so I can speak into the mic. My name is Bob Cummings, and I'm here to talk to you about ChatGPT and Wikipedia plugin and whether or not it helped increase the quality of student writing. I'm using, unfortunately, past tense because I have the job here to talk to you of about a deprecated product that no longer exists. But it did exist uh, last fall, and we did use it in our classrooms. And I think it gestures toward a future where we have more tools that are integrated with generative AI products. So a little bit about me. Um, Bob Cummings is my username. And I work as Executive Director of Academic Innovation and Professor of Writing and Rhetoric. I'm also Director of Digital Media and Data Studies, interdis interdisciplinary minor at the University of Mississippi here in the US. Um, I teach and I research digital writing. Um, I'm interested in how humans interact with machines when they do writing. I serve on the board for the Wiki Education Foundation. And I do like to edit Wikipedia, uh, especially areas of the um, uh, NHRP for uh, the US, although I haven't done it in a while. I'm kind of a bit rusty, but I enjoy doing it when I can. So here's a little outline of what I want to do today. I'll give you some background on the study, a description. We've got some surveys that we did pre and post study with our students. Um, then we'll go into the actual findings of the study. Um, I've had to summarize some of the data because uh, it's a lot of data. Um, and then talk a little bit about conclusions. Um, and let me just tell you in advance, um, you had a, a really, I think, a nice presentation preceding me, very well put together, um, and nice slides with lots of images. Um, you're not about to experience that. You're about to experience the opposite. Unfortunately, I have one image in my slides. So um, it's very text heavy. I apologize in advance. And then we'll, we'll wrap up with a little question and answer. So here's some background on our work. Um, this is an IRB uh, exempt project we filed with our institution in order to conduct it. As you may remember, of course, I think everyone in the room is quite well aware that it was November of 2022 when OpenAI released ChatGPT. Um, in March 2023, um, it was upgraded, or at least the version 4 came out. Um, in July of 2023, the foundation with ChatGPT released Wikipedia plugin. And then shortly thereafter, we began our fall semester at the University of Mississippi. And then in November of 2023, the product was deprecated. So we got this work done just before it was shut down. So what was the plugin on a Wikipedia plugin on ChatGPT? So in this case, if you were on ChatGPT4 uh, desktop, you were given access to this plugin. You could uh, seek it out and use it and add it. Uh, ChatGPT4 at that point was a paid service. Uh, the plugin used existing API to find relevant Wikipedia articles and incorporate into its responses. And it returned the top 12 passages of the top four relevant articles to your search. It summarized responses using only that information. And it included a boilerplate disclaimer, uh, including licensing. And it, most important to us, it included links back to the relevant Wikipedia articles. So if you um, may be telling many folks in this room may be familiar with the tool. And if you use the tool, you will know that like most of ChatGPT, it worked most of the time, right? So um, this was sort of the target description in my personal experience. I did not get this all of the time, um, but I got it a lot of the time. So we went ahead and worked with it. <clears throat> This is an example of, I'm afraid, I'm sorry, the text is a little small on this, but um, this is uh, from a presentation that Mariana Pinchuk gave earlier. And this is an example of a search on Wikipedia with ChatGPT plugin. Um, I'm sorry, ChatGPT with Wikipedia plugin. And so her search term here was, when will the Women's World Cup be and where is it? And then it got a response, and you could see from that pull-down bar next to the ChatGPT image, it said, I used Wikipedia for this. It gave uh, three paragraphs answering it, and then it gave a link back to 
the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup Wikipedia page. And then it explained that it answered the content using Wikipedia and also explained that there was a Creative Commons attribution share alike license associated with that. And also helpfully, it told you it might not be accurate. So a little more background. Why was this important for Wikipedia generally? Well, is our information pathways change and generative AI continues to emerge, figuring out new roles for Wikipedia, I believe, and I think most of the community would agree is, is essential in its delivery. And any partnership that put Wikipedia into this leading AI platform, even if temporary, was valuable, in my opinion, for at least three reasons. It could introduce Wikipedia to a new set of users. So if we think about many people using ChatGPT, um, if they had the Wikipedia plugin, but they really had not had much experience with Wikipedia, this could be an introduction to them. And it could improve the reliability of the information that the ChatGPT uh, users would receive. And it could serve as a prototype for delivering Wikipedia VA as a branded, uh, via AI as a branded experience rather than empowering AI anonymously. So as we know that the, one of the issues with uh, the good quality information that's on Wikipedia, everyone is able, not everyone, but many uh, firms are able to harvest this information and then they bury the fact that it came from Wikipedia. This product at least held up the fact that it was partnering with Wikipedia to give you these answers. Why was it important to us on the higher education side? Well, um, helping students figure out ways to use generative AI, and that, at that time it was a contemporary product, use it responsibly, effectively, use it ethically as a key goal for higher education. Um, a lot of faculty now are experiencing with AI gen write, writing generators with little guidance from the research community. There's uh, increasing research, um, but there's not a lot of consensus and a lot of really high quality guidance. So people in a large part are kind of going on their own. Um, and then one of the main struggles we have in uh, accuracy of information is establishing provenance. So we would see that partnering with Wikipedia was a great avenue so that writers could see where information was coming from and how it was compiled. So um, Wikipedia is definitely an ally in digital literacy. And I think most of the people who involved with the project saw that merit in this. Okay, a little description of our study. Um, so I had some initial conversations, uh, I think courtesy of Leanna with uh, Mariana at Wikimedia Foundation, and I saw the tool and became really curious about the impact um, of this tool on student writing. Um, I contacted some fellow teachers on my campus who were also teaching writing last fall. We really felt there was a positive impact for incorporating the tool into our writing classes, and we felt like it was consistent with the outcomes of those writing classes. So there was no real question as to whether or not using this tool, we felt, would help our writers. And then we decided that we designed this experiment to measure the potential impact of ChatGPT with Wikipedia plugin on our students' use of resources in their argument essays and our first year writing courses. And I'll give you a little more context about all of that, my institution and the class. So my institution is University of Mississippi. It's a large research intensive institution with around 22,000 undergraduates. Um, the course that we were working with is the first semester, first year writing. Uh, we always call it freshman comp, short for composition. And it's sort of the foundation course if you're not familiar with it for all students at universities to help them develop literacy skills that they'll use throughout the rest of their experience in higher ed. In the general outcomes and our, all of our classes is helping students developing writing process or an awareness that writing is a process, helping our students with exploration and argumentation skills, help them understand how to write for a variety of purposes for, and for a variety of audiences, helping them develop research skills, and then helping them utilize conventions and mechanics. Um, in particular, in our course, we leaned into understanding what constitutes credible evidence and how to incorporate evidence in their writing. Okay, so this was a really key point where we saw the utilization of ChatGPT with Wikipedia as useful for this. A little bit about our students. Um, 
First year students at my university have an average ACT composite score of 24 and a half, which puts them somewhere in the 78th to the 81th percentiles compared to their peers who also took the ACT. And in the assignment, <clears throat> we chose to use um, the argument essay because it was a common assignment. It's a common assignment across, I dare say, most every section of first year composition in the United States. Um, it's just really sort of the backbone of what we teach in first year composition. Can't promise you it's in every one, but I'd be surprised if you didn't find some version of that. And also because it really leaned on and explicitly invited writers, required writers, to bring in outside sources. So again, we saw the ChatGPT with the Wikipedia plugin as an asset in teaching that. So from this, we developed three research questions. Does college classroom writing produced using ChatGPT with Wikipedia plugin engage more sources than the writing that's produced without the plugin? So if you're using this tool, do you incorporate more sources into your writing? Um, does college classroom writing produced using ChatGPT with a Wikipedia plugin engage higher quality sources than writing produced without the plugin? So do you use more sources and are the sources you're using better? Then this one was a little bit of a reach, a sort of regret putting it in at this point, but we had already made our research plan, so here we go. Um, did they do a better job of integrating those sources? So this was always something, is always something as a literacy teacher we really want to see. And um, I think you could make a pretty good argument that it might not be related to the first two, but and nonetheless, it's in there. Okay, so here's our experiment design. Uh, students in all these classes wrote on the same assignment, which is our argument essay. So it was literally the same assignment, the same prompt. There was no variation across the courses. Uh, the classes experiment and the experiment group, so this was the group that used ChatGPT with OpenAI, were given OpenAI accounts with access to ChatGPT. Uh, Wikimedia Foundation, thanks to Mariana, uh, contacted OpenAI for the accounts which were arranged and then donated without cost to the students. So students who participated did not have to pay for access. Uh, classes in the experiment group were given time to tour and orient themselves with ChatGPT with a Wikipedia plugin. And this is an important caveat. They were encouraged but not required to use ChatGPT with Wikipedia plugins. So this is a real limitation on the study. I should have more, I should have more deliberate discussion of the limitations here, but it's very much a limitation of the study. That means that the folks that were in the experiment group may not have received the treatment, essentially. I do believe, though, and have pretty good confidence that it would have been a rare student who had taken the time to learn the tool, had been taught about the tool, who didn't actually end up engaging the tool. Uh, the control group was not given accounts and ChatGPT was not discussed. So here again is another limitation. That does not mean the folks in the control group could not have gone and used ChatGPT with or without Wikipedia plugin on their own. So um, this is the sort of murky world of uh, education research, at least as I was able to construct it in the fall of 2023. So we had 86 students that were in our experiment sections, and we had 56 students that were enrolled in our control sections. And this is sort of what it looked like, um, the total number of students, the total number of sections. Um, and we broke control and experiment out to be consistent with teachers. We did not want an instructor to be it, but have would be both in a control group and an experiment group. So if you were teaching and you were given control, then you stayed control for all your sections and same with experiment. Okay, so as we got started, we administered surveys both pre and post to our students. Um, and uh, we asked questions largely about their attitudes and opinions about generative AI in ChatGPT specifically, and Wikipedia. The surveys also ask questions about students' current uses of generative AI. Um, and we looked at really the familiarity of uh, AI technology such as ChatGPT, their frequency of use, whether they, see this is my one image in my slide, and this is why you don't use images in slides, and you stick only with alphanumeric, okay? Uh, it's cutting up some of my uh, valuable, valuable text. Purposes, uh, we asked them to do use uh, generative AI for serious purposes and for non-serious purposes. 
What do you think about the accuracy? Do you trust generative AI? Do you trust Wikipedia? And your overall opinions of generative AI and Wikipedia. And we asked the same questions of the same students, both before and after they participated in the experiment. So we have sort of six main findings from these questions. The first was that students have a range of familiarity with generative AI. So we called out ChatGPT, Bard, Claude, and Bing with 100 respondents uh, before they started, and we were sort of all over the place with uh, familiarity. Second finding from the surveys was that students largely enjoyed using AI both for non-serious and serious purposes. This is the pre-question asking about non-serious tasks. Um, sorry, my, my graphics here skewed a little bit, but the, the numbers are correct and not, the graphics are not quite as representative as they might be. So they said they would use it, you know, for both serious and non-serious tasks. And then they also asked for specifically about serious tasks and they were, you know, sort of split on that. Um, third main finding was students were unsure of the ac accuracy and hesitant to trust AI. So this was a, another pre-question. Um, you can see the largest group there on the question of whether they believe AI technologies are accurate uh, was largely neutral with some uh, significant response and agree. And then same really sort of along the lines of trust. Um, so trust and belief and accuracy largely track um, a little less trustful, even though a little bit more belief and accuracy. Um, and then fourth main finding, most students' overall assessments of generative AI are neutral with a significant mi minority finding them favorable. So you can see here, and I'll show you another slide in a second, which is sort of the same conclusion. Um, most folks were neutral and it was a little bit favorable. Um, you, uh, as a researcher, my, what I lament is you cannot, if you're doing educational research, you cannot escape the classroom as your venue. So no matter what I say and no matter what I do, the specter of the fact that I'm asking a question of someone who's going to receive a grade in my class from me cannot be erased. And so we know this both about the questions you'll see in a second about Wikipedia. Many people are basically uh, responding with what they think is the answer I want to hear. And so they think largely that faculty don't want them to use Wikipedia. And they also think that they're not sure this is a new technology. So they're, they, may, they may be thinking, I want to respond with like, I'm unsure and I don't know. So, so very similar in the post responses, um, either neutral or a little bit more favorable on the post responses. Slight improvement there. And these next three slides are specific pre-post comparisons. So this question about accuracy um, did not seem to change very much based on the participation and the use of generative AI. So their experience with generative AI did not seem to change, in their opinion of accuracy did not seem to change based on their experience with generative AI. Trust um, seemed to harden maybe a little bit. So um, there seemed to be a little bit maybe, uh, you know, uh, a little bit more agreement, but a little more disagreement about whether they trust. So um, it seemed that the neutral shrank a bit and uh, the agree and disagree and uh, sort of pulled up a bit in terms of trust after they had used it. And the experience of using generative AI slightly improved users' overall opinion. So we can see it's kind of not a great change there in terms of favorable slightly um, increased. So those were the main findings that we had in our pre and post surveys. So now we look at the findings of the experiment itself, and I'll tell you a little bit more about how we conduct the ex conducted the experiment. So here's the data that we collected on college classroom use of ChatGPT with the Wikipedia plugin and whether or not the students engaged uh, more sources while using uh, ChatGPT with Wikipedia plugin. The answer is a clear yes. I think it's really revealing if you look at the mode of the experiment group. Uh, so most common number in the control group was three sources. The most common number in the experiment group was four. 
And then also you can see that consistent with the median and you can see the, the increase of one being consistent with the median and the mean. So in general, writers who use uh, ChatGPT with Wikipedia plugin uh, incorporated more sources in their assignment. Okay, our second question, did they use higher quality sources? <clears throat> um, dear reader, this was a bit of work. Um, in order to figure out whether or not we used more sources, we, this is, if you, if there's any first year composition teachers in the audience, you'll be familiar with this, the CRAP system. So CRAP is currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, and purpose. And it's a very common uh, way of judging, uh, helping students judge the quality of sources they're considering to use in their work. And we used this uh, system uh, and created our own rubric to judge whether or not the sources our students were bringing in, both in the control and experiment groups, uh, were higher quality according to the CRAP system. Um, but we weren't satisfied with this. We also added a category for a venue. So we also added a category where we said, well, is this a published source? And if so, where is it published? So that was important to us so much so that the group decided that we wanted to add it a venue. So we sort of ended up with crap V. Then um, we had a team of eight raters. So these were all faculty not teaching the same students in the study um, who used the rubric to evaluate 527 sources in 111 essays. So, and then the reliability we checked um, just as an aside in our department, what the way that in our writing department, the way that one of the things we manage assessment of whether or not our students are learning is we pull significant samples of what their writing is and every semester we measure a particular dimension in the writing and we have teams of writers that look at this particular dimension. So in this example, they could be looking at accuracy, let's say. Um, and so our teams are very used to um, reliability training, so we will, uh, what we call norming up, so we have a, a prearranged selection, an anchor essay, and then we rate through until everybody sees the same and comes up with the same values. That's how we establish reliability in this study. Um, I know that for assessment people, uh, validity is an equal concern. I'm just going to say at this point, um, ex ask that uh, you accept that we establish validity. I asked my partner, our assessment person, how we establish validity, and I honestly don't understand his answer well enough. He's really confident, confident we establish validity. So if you want to talk validity, I'm available, uh, but I didn't really include that in the presentation. And then for each of our crap elements, there were no less than five questions. So like, if you, we looked at the question of credibility, so we had a team of raters, they looked at every source, every student had pulled into the, each essay, and they said, is this, is this a credible source? And we had five sub-questions. They either had a yes or no answer on those five sub-questions as to whether or not this was a credible source. And that's how we carried this out, which yielded a pretty high number. So like, this is a good example. This is the example of the sub-questions that we used on, um, authority. So our raters, we looked at these six questions uh, on authority and studied each citation that a student, I'm sorry, I misspoke, I'm sorry, each source that a student pulled in. Of course, they could cite it multiple times. And they were also given an open field. So after this, if they looked at these six questions about an incorporation of a particular source and trying to think about whether or not this was um, an authoritative source, they still had concerns, they had an open text field. So I submit we were fairly thorough in this. We created a this rubric, like I said, it ended up with 36 points of evaluation because it also ended up including our questions about source integration and what the writers had done to integrate the sources as well as not they were high quality. So again, it was 527 sources across students in 111 essays. 
So we generated 18,972 measurements. Now these were all human judgment measurements, okay? So nothing was automated. Um, and each of the folks that were given this judgment was a full-time writing faculty member with not less than five years experience teaching writing full-time. So, all right, what is the overall result? The overall result I'm summarizing here because each of those different um, 36 rubric points, uh, we clocked in on the different dimensions, currency, relevance, authority, accuracy, purpose, and venue. And so what I'm summarizing here is, is there a 10% difference um, in those sub questions? So I just, I took the good, the rule of thumb that 10% was a significant difference. And so when we looked at the question of currency, we found that between the groups that were using ChatGPT and the groups that were with Wikipedia plugin and the groups that were not using ChatGPT with Wikipedia plugin, the results were either mixed or equal. In terms of relevance, the same. The results were either mixed or equal. The relevance of the sources used by the two groups were mixed or the same. In terms of authority, the sources that the control group, so the group that did not have ChatGPT with Wikipedia plugin, uh, we found that they had um, more sources, sources with more authority. There was no, uh, it was mixed or same in terms of accuracy. In terms of purpose, the control group had stronger sources. And then in terms of venue, the results were mixed or the same. So um, largely mixed with a slight edge toward the group that was not using ChatGPT with Wikipedia plugin in terms of the quality of sources that were brought in. Last question, did they do a better job of integrating sources? So to test how well students were integrating sources, um, we had these what, five measurements. So we looked at signal phrases. We writing teachers love signal phrases. We always tell our students, if you're going to pull in a source, tell us expert so-and-so is about to tell you, right? So we use signal phrases a lot. We, we really maybe talk about them too much. Um, we, we asked the authors if they established the authority of the source they were bringing in. We saw, thought that would help with integration. We'd like to see boundaries between the writer's thinking and the outside thinking. We'd like to see that the author demonstrates how the source is furthering their own argument, right? So not only am I bringing in these weather data, and I'm trying to tell you that Florida is seeing more and more hurricanes, but um, I'm bringing it in and reminding you that this is my overall point. In the, the Valhalla for us writing teachers, the, the thing that we're all striving for is this idea that the writer is placing sources in conversation. So if you're bringing in multiple sources, then you're uh, working on how uh, the sources are uh, in touch with each other as you build out your overall discussion. Okay, so what did we find? Not a great deal of difference in terms of the quality of, I'm sorry, in terms of the integration of the sources that students brought in. And again, I, if, you, if you tell me that really our research question three is independent of the use of ChatGPT with Wikipedia, I would, I'd be sympathetic to those claims, but we were really hopeful that we might see something in terms of difference. Um, there might be a little bit more boundaries on the control group, but then again, nothing really rose to the 10% difference. So I would say it was probably a wash on that as well. So I'm running out of time here. So conclusions, um, students who use ChatGPT with Wikipedia plugin did cite more external sources. The quality of those sources was a wash. They were not citing higher quality sources. And the writing that they produced did not integrate sources better. Um, so that's really what I have for you. I've got lots of things to say about the results, but I wanted to give you the results and then give you a chance to ask questions. My main interpretation from those results is that we as teachers of writing have to do a better job of helping students use the sources that ChatGPT with Wikipedia plugin or, or Wikipedia itself gives them. And that these tools are giving them greater access to more sources. Uh, the quality doesn't seem to be different in terms of the sources they're accessing, but 
we really haven't figured out how to help them once they get those sources. Thanks very much. Questions? Yeah, hi. I'm sorry if you covered this, but uh, two things. First of all, fit fantastic presentation. Thank you. Uh, first one is, uh, who created the plugin? And secondly, with you to thank you, Mariana. <laughs> uh, Mariana created the plugin. And the second one was like, why was it deprecated? <laughs> I'll let Mariana answer. I actually don't know. So. Hi, this is Mariana Pinchuk, uh, Future Audiences. Uh, this was a Future Audiences experiment, so we made a plugin for ChatGPT that uh, was specifically providing information from Wikipedia instead of from any, any piece of information that ChatGPT might have. Um, and it was a, meant to be a limited experiment, so we didn't plan for it to last forever. Um, but also, uh, ChatGPT itself moved in a different direction. They were initially offering these kinds of like limited plugins that different companies, different um, partners could build. Um, and then they pivoted, and now it's much more open-ended. So you can, you can still do kind of the functionality of what this plugin was doing on ChatGPT right now, if you just tell ChatGPT, I want you to only draw from Wikipedia when you're giving me information, when you're summarizing sources. Um, but the like plugin thing doesn't exist anymore. So that's what happened. Thank you for that answer. That's, that's a great question. Hello, Bob. Hey. Thank you for your work as always. Thank um, you. So I have two questions. Yes. And, um, one of them has to do with your survey, and specifically the Wikipedia part, because you know, I know we're talking about ChatGPT, but I'm really interested in what the students had to say about their use of Wikipedia. Uh, and, and I know, as you say, that obviously their answers are skewed because they're, they're thinking, hey, the professor doesn't want. By the way, the other question, um, it's not, that's not the other question, but uh, were the surveys anonymous? Because that, that would be like, you know. Surveys maybe, were anonymous. Yes. Okay, that's great. So the, the, the second question, um, I, I would like to know more about how the students used the response from ChatGPT, because you showed us a slide where, you know, you could see what ChatGPT with the plugin would do, but was there any, uh, you know, did you have a conversation about how they would extract the sources to, or, you know, how, how do they, from that screen, how do they get the sources that they eventually used in, the, in so their papers? I should back up. So I said the surveys were anonymous. They were not anonymous. They were de-identified. So true anonymity would be there's no way for someone to determine who authored something. And with a small class of about 22 students, it, and also with the sources, we actually used paper for the surveys. So um, it's not really genuinely anonymous because Someone could go back through a stack and look and try to figure out someone's handwriting. So we tried our best to make them um, uh, de-identified. And then I can't speak with specificity to the education that, I think your question is this, the training and education that students received with what to do with the sources once they had them. I think that. I uh, was giving them. Oh, that's yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That's uh, actually. Uh, oh right, right. Okay, yeah. Good question. Um, and so that would be that would be variable. Yeah, that would be variable based on what they were given and what their experience was, and so. So we could follow that link to the Wikipedia page. Yeah. Well, they could use the source of the Wikipedia page itself, but then they could also explore, as anyone could, the Wikipedia pages that might be on, the, Wikipedia, the sources that might be on the Wikipedia page. Yes. So there's multiple ways there. Yeah. Yes. Hi, thank you. Excellent. Um, I had a student do a similar experiment by judging the quality of the responses was getting with the chat GDP in general and chat GDP focus on a similar plugin. Um, of course, it's very hard to do because chat GDP is constantly evolving. And it didn't find, like you, many differences, but because chat GDP 
at that moment in time, heavily favored Wikipedia uh, mm. information. Mm -hmm. So it's not, I mean, that became a challenge. Did you, were you able to check whether the information with or without the plugin was, was very different? Because uh, for this student, it wasn't. The responses he was getting, it, it's a little bit different experiment. Right. No, we did not check for that. But as, as you indicated, I agree that in personal experience, the, the it, chat GPT output to roll the dice and is very uh, inconsistent across outputs. I think that was the question. I'm not sure if I got it, but I'm happy to follow up if not. Uh, I have a question about your inclusion of venue. Yes. Uh, so could you elaborate on the definition of venue and why it differs from like authority? I'm just having trouble differentiating. So uh, our folks went uh, to include, it is interrelated. So venue would help establish authority um, and that was mainly how it was looked at. But um, in, the author in, the look in, in, in looking at authority, I think the Raiders felt like venue was not addressed explicitly. So yes, venue would be used to establish authority, but high quality information that did not have clear provenance does exist, right? So they tried to give latitude to the fact that students might include information, but might not have great source for it, or it might not come from a really clear standing, um, but it still might be high quality. Did you notice any cases where you might have the same source authority but different venues for the same resource? But different venues. I did not notice. I did not look, but that's an interesting question. Thank you. Yes, thank you for that great question. Two minutes. Uh, you mentioned students were not able to integrate the sources um, so well. Why, why do you think this was the case? Well, it's, it's supposition on my part, but I think we failed them and did not do a good, a good enough job of, of explicitly helping them integrate the sources that they were finding. One last question. Okay, uh, thanks Bob for the, for the study, very interesting. Um, was there consistency across the assignments in terms of the required number of sources? Yes. Students were, and what was that? Three. Okay, so they actually went above and beyond. Yes. Interesting. Okay, yes. cool. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. I'm happy to answer any questions afterward.